Good afternoon and welcome to Bloomerang Academy. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Diana Otero and I am the Product Engagement Manager at Bloomerang. You might recognize me from attending our Bloomerang Academy classes or listening to our release and health videos. Today we are talking about everything you can do with Google Sheets, particularly lists and dashboards. I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Jesse Gilchrist. Jesse is a Zapier certified expert and Bloomerang integrations consultant at Sidekick Solutions. Sidekick Solutions is a Bloomerang partner specializing in system automations for Bloomerang. Sidekick Solutions has been a Bloomerang user since 2013 and most recently was part of the Bloomerang team that launched the Bloomerang Zapier app, which is a key component of today's webinar. We're excited to have Jessie here today to share her expertise and explore how you can use the Bloomerang Zapier app with Google Sheets to create lists, directories, and dashboards. Hi, Jessie. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Diana. Thanks so much. And thank you, everyone, for being on here today. Happy Thursday. It's great to be here. Unfortunately, I don't have the sunny weather that Diana is having. I have rain and wind. Um, which is what I get for living in Washington State. So it's fall here, full fall day, um, but excited to talk to you today about how we can use Google Sheets to create lists and dashboards. So the goal of today's webinar is to show you how Bloomerang integrations and workflow automations with Google Sheets can streamline processes, save you time, and reduce effort. Today, we're gonna start by introducing Bloomerang and Zapier how they work together, and why Zapier integrations are a key feature of your Bloomerang system. And then we're gonna dive right in to explore and demonstrate how you can use the Bloomerang Zapier app with Google Sheets to create real-time lists, directories, and activity dashboards. So we have use cases throughout the presentation to showcase how you can create these automations at your organization so that you can support your fundraising efforts, and improve accessibility and visibility to key metrics. So as Diana mentioned, feel free to submit any questions during the presentation. We've got a couple built-in breaks and then we should have more time for questions at the end. So let's go ahead and start with a quick poll to see how many of you are using Zapier. And if you're using Zapier, if you're using it with Bloomerang. Also feel free to let us know if you've never heard of Zapier or if you've heard of it but are not currently using it. Thanks, Jesse, and thanks to everyone. It looks like 55% have heard of Zapier before but never used it. 31% um, of the respondents, this is their first time hearing of Zapier, and we have 9% who have Zaps running with Bloomerang. Perfect. So since there are the, quite a big percentage that are brand new to Zapier, for those of you that have been on our Bloomerang and Zapier series so far with Academy, I apologize if some of this information is a little bit repetitive, but you probably will be able to recite it back to your own organization at this point. Um, but we're going to start with an overview of what Zapier is and why we believe it's a key feature of your Bloomerang system and fundraising strategy. So for those of you that are new to Zapier, you might be wondering why we're talking about Zapier when this webinar is about how to create lists and dashboards in Google Sheets with Bloomerang. And it's a fair question that offers an exciting answer. Zapier is the software that enables additional Bloomerang integrations and a platform for automating day-to-day -day tasks that impact your organization's fundraising efforts. What it is, is it's really the middleware that sits in between your Bloomerang database and other apps like Google Sheets, helping them talk to one another. So at its core, Zapier is automation software. And with Zapier, you can build one integration or many, automating hundreds of tasks around your Bloomerang system within a single platform. So let's talk about why we get so excited about Bloomerang and Zapier integrations. So the first reason, and most importantly, is that Zapier connects to over 2,000 other applications. Any app that's in Zapier's directory can be connected to Bloomerang. So if it's on Zapier's list, you can integrate with Bloomerang, and that includes Google Sheets. To see the list of apps that are available in Zapier, you can go to zapier.com apps. To view their directory, you can search 
for other applications that your organization uses. You can scroll through the most popular apps that are available or even filter through the different app categories to find other applications that maybe you aren't using now, but could be useful as part of your fundraising strategy and integrate those with your Bloomerang system. And the search is just as easy as typing in the, the app name. You can see if we type in Bloomerang, it's going to show us that there's the Bloomerang Zapier app there. So very easy to go in and look up if another application you're using is available on Zapier. The second reason we get so excited about Bloomerang integrations with Zapier is that Zapier was designed for anyone to build automation. You don't need to know how to code to build Zap. Anyone can build and maintain a Zap, and we're going to walk through some builds today so you can get a feel for what this looks like and how easy it is to set up these automations for yourself. And then the last piece is that Zapier enables custom integrations. So your organization isn't going to be limited to a one-size-fits-all workflow, mapping, or formatting. You can build your integrations that are perfect for your organization and your workflow. And as we all know, flexibility is especially important because every organization's fundraising strategy and reporting needs are different. So before we dive into the specifics for using Google Sheets to create real-time lists and dashboards, let's first talk about how um, you know, how data flows between Bloomerang and Zapier. So with Bloomerang Zapier integrations, you can build integrations with data flowing out of Bloomerang to Google Sheets, and also integrations with data flowing into Bloomerang from Google Sheets. So essentially, data can really flow both directions. Our webinar today is going to focus on workflows that transfer data from Bloomerang to Google Sheets. But if you watch our previous Academy webinar on Bloomerang and Google Sheets that was focused on math updates and math edits, you'll see use cases for syncing data back from the Google Sheet to Bloomerang. So let's go ahead and dive into our first use case. So our first use case is going to cover a real-time directory or list. And this is a great place to start because it is foundational to spreadsheet integrations with Bloomerang. Other use cases for Bloomerang and Google Sheet automation all begin with some form of list building in a spreadsheet. You may be asking, why would an organization want to automate the generation of a list or directory in Google Sheets when you can run the same data in a Bloomerang report? First, Zapier enabled Bloomerang integrations with Google Sheets run in real time. And so your workflow in Zapier triggers when data or an activity occurs in Bloomerang, pushing the data through the Google Sheets. So it's constantly updating in real time to match what's happening in your Bloomerang system. And so you might want to consider this type of automation if you have non-Bloomerang users or team members that need access to data but you don't want to provide them with a login to your Bloomerang database. Maybe you need up-to-date lists in real time. So instead of having to go in and run a report, you can see that data right there in the Google Sheet in real time. Again, it's going to be more efficient to have a real-time list instead of running a report. And then the last piece is that the list is a data set that can be used for a dashboard or for other updates. So the possibilities for generating real-time lists in Google Sheets are pretty extensive, and we're going to look at two examples. So the first example generates a list of new recurring donation schedules when they're created in Bloomerang. This can be a really helpful tool if your fundraising strategy includes a targeted appeal with the goal of collecting more recurring donations. So for each new transaction, in Bloomerang that is a recurring donation schedule, the constituent's name and schedule details are going to be written to a Google Sheet. So before we dive into Zapier and set up our workflow, we need to set up our Google Sheet first. Then we can proceed to build our integration. So you can see here in my demo Google Sheet that I've set up columns for the different data that I want to pull in from my transaction in Bloomerang to create my directory 
of recurring donation schedules. So we've got our account number, we've got the name of our constituent, and then I have the details about the recurring donation schedule so I can see those as well. So the start date, which will be the first installment date, the installment amount, if there's an auto payment set up, and then the fund campaign and appeal for that recurring donation schedule as well. So once we set up our columns in our Google Sheet, we can hop over to our Zapier account and click Make a Zap. So this workflow is going to start when we have a new recurring donation schedule created in Bloomerang. So I'm going to select my Bloomerang app in Zapier. And then for my triggering event, we're going to click New Transaction. Now there's many types of transactions that can be entered in Bloomerang. And so the new transaction trigger in the Bloomerang Zapier app allows us to filter down and define what type or types of transactions we want to trigger our workflow. So in this case, we only want to trigger our workflow if it's a new recurring donation schedule. So I'm just going to select that from the drop down menu. If there were other types of transactions we wanted to trigger this workflow, we could select multiple as well. But for this one, we just want those recurring donation schedules. Now for this workflow, we don't need to set a minimum or a maximum amount unless your organization wanted to. And then we also don't need to pull in the constituent's key mode of giving history or household information because we're really wanting this directory to simply be a list or a, a, a real-time updated directory of those recurring donation schedules. So we can leave these options blank because we don't need to pull that information in. We'll show in our next use case why we might want to pull in the cumulative giving history and household information. But for this one, we're going to start pretty basic and leave those blank as we don't need that data. So now we're going to go ahead and click continue. And this is going to let us test our trigger to generate sample data. When we choose to test our trigger, this is going to recur recurring, or return recurring donation schedules that have been created on our Bloomerang system recently. And these are samples only and will not run through the integration because they were created before we turned our integration on. So that trigger is only run in real time. So the sample data that we're pulling in is simply to help us set up the mapping so that we can make sure our integration will run successfully once we turn it on. Now, based on the way we've set up our spreadsheet here, we want the start date for our recurring donation schedule. And dates are one of those fields that it can be really important to make sure the way that the date is coming through from your source application, which in this case is Bloomerang, is formatted correctly for how you want, to it, you want it to appear in your target application, which would be Google Sheets. So in our sample transaction, we are going to scroll through here and we are going to find a recurring donation start date. So we want to look and see how these dates are formatted. And so you can see our recurring donation start date right here is formatted with a year, a month, a day, and then a UTC timestamp on there. Now, we only want the month, day, and year to write into our Google Sheet. So before we actually write data to the Google Sheet, we are actually going to reformat how that date is set up. So our first action step in our workflow is going to be to select the formatter by Zapier app this is an app that's available on Zapier for free for you to use. And for the action event, we're going to choose date and time. I'm going to click continue. And then I'm going to, for transform, I'm going to select formatting. We don't need to add or subtract time, but we want to reformat what our date looks like. And so then in the input, we'll select our recurring donation, start date. And what we want to do then is set our two formats. So the format we want our date to be converted to. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select that we want month, day, year with forward slashes between them. So zap your formatter steps come in handy when you need to transform data in your zap. And they're a low code user friendly way to modify data as it flows through your zap. So if you click continue, You'll see we can test this step and you'll see that the input is that date with a timestamp. 
And if we click test and review, it's going to convert this to say 11-01-2020. You can see right there, we have our properly formatted date that then we can use when we write the data into our Google Sheet. Now this step is completely optional. If your organization is fine with the date and time formatting that comes out of the new transaction trigger in Bloomerang, you can skip this formatting step and go straight to writing the new donation schedule to the Google Sheet. But for a lot of your users, it likely will be more user friendly if they're seeing just a standard date format instead of date with a timestamp. So now that we have gone ahead and set up our formatter, we're going to add our step to create the row in our Google Sheet for the new recurring donation schedule. So I'm going to select Google Sheets as my application. And my action event is going to be that I'm going to create a new spreadsheet row. So I'm going to click continue, select my Google Sheets account. And then I'll want to select the spreadsheet and then even the worksheet in that spreadsheet that we want to write our data to. So I'm going to go ahead and look up my demo sheet that I have here. And then I'm going to select my worksheet, which is my new recurring donation schedules. You can see that I have a number of sheets in my demo, but we're going to use the new recurring donation schedule sheet. And when I select the appropriate worksheet, you can see that it populates different fields or it presents different fields that align with the column headers we set up in our Google Sheet. So this is why it's so important to set up your Google Sheet and the structure you want to use before you hop into Zapier and start making your Zap. Now to map our data from our new transaction in Bloomerang into the appropriate columns in our Google Sheet operates really similar to like a mail merge. We're gonna click in the field, select the new transaction in Bloomerang step, and then scroll or search to find the field that we want to map in. So in this case, we want the account number. So I can just start typing in account number, select the constituent account number. We can do the name as well. So the full name for that constituent. Now for start date, because we want that formatted date that we just uh, created, instead of going to the new transaction in Bloomerang, I'm going to go to my date time and use the output from that as my start date. And then I can just pull in the other items from here as well. So but we want the recurring donation amount. There we go. The amount, uh, which will be the amount for that recurring donation schedule. You can pull in the auto payment method if there is one. And then we can pull in fund campaign and appeal. Campaign and appeal. So you can see we have all of the fields from our Bloomerang transaction populating most of our columns and then that reformatted date. So at this point, you'd be ready to turn on your Zap and go ahead and start testing it. Now, I already have one turned on, so we're actually going to hop into Bloomerang and we're going to go to a constituent account and create a new recurring donation schedule. So I'm going to be here in Sherlock's account. We're going to add a new recurring donation. I'm going to create our new schedule. So we're just going to say it's a $10 recurring donation schedule to our unrestricted fund, the annual campaign, and we're going to say it came in from an online donation and there's no auto payment method. I'm going to set my start date though. He doesn't want his uh, recurring donation to start until December 1st. So we're going to go ahead and set the start date as December 1st. And the frequency is going to be monthly. So when I go ahead and click save, now this runs in near real time. So we can go in here to our Google Sheet and see that as soon as I click save, we can hop over here, it's processing through right now. You can see, there we go. There's our new row for Sherlock, the start date of December 1st. You can see the installment amount that no auto payment method was set up and then the fund campaign and appeal that were assigned for that recurring donation schedule. So this is one of the most basic directories or lists that you could create in the Google Sheet. But it's a really powerful one and one that allows you to share information, especially with non Bloomerang users, really easily.
So let's go ahead and talk through another use case. So this time we're going to build a directory of constituents who have given enough in their lifetime to qualify for our organization's giving circle. This is a great use case for streamlining access to segmented donor lists for recognition reports or for non-Bloomerang users to easily access the donor list. So for this use case, for each new transaction in Bloomerang, the workflow will add eligible constituents to our giving circle directory. But our eligibility is going to be based on the constituent's lifetime revenue. And we also want to make sure that the lifetime revenue that's reflected in our Google Sheet updates whenever a constituent makes a new gift. So you can see that this workflow is going to have more steps than our last one did. And we're going to walk through this together. Now, the first step, just like our last one, is that we want to start by setting up the different column headers for the data that we want to pull into our workflow. So you can see here that I have the really basic data here. I have the account number and name. I have the start date. We're calling it membership in this example, but this would be the date that they first became a member of our giving circle. I have the lifetime revenue amount. I've also pulled in some contact information so that it's easy to create a mailing list for our giving circle directly from this Google Sheet. And then I've pulled in some household information as well. So let's go ahead and hop over to Zapier and set this up. So I'm going to go back to my Zapier dashboard and I'm going to click make a zap. And we're going to start making a new workflow. So similar to our last one, we are going to start with a new transaction in Bloomerang. Now, we want to filter to only have our trigger run when the transaction type is a donation, a recurring donation payment, or a pledge payment. So we essentially want to choose the transaction types that have revenue associated with them. And these are also the transaction types that also contribute to that lifetime revenue uh, total, which is what we're going to use to determine eligibility for our giving circle. We also want to set our minimum amount to at least a penny to filter out any transactions that are entered with a zero dollar amount. And then for this use case, we're going to set the cumulative giving history and the household information to true. Because not only do we want to write some of this data to our Google Sheet, but we actually need the cumulative giving history included to determine if the constituent is eligible for membership in our giving circle. So we're going to go ahead and click continue. And we're going to test our trigger just like we did on that last workflow so we can pull in a sample transaction. Now, again, this is going to pull in sample transactions um, from your database. Typically, it's the three most recent transactions that have been created in your database. So the constituent that gets pulled in may or may not meet the criteria for the giving circle, but you can still use that sample transaction to set up your mapping. So once we have our sample transaction, I'm going to click Continue. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a filter. Oops. Filter. So Filter by Zapier is another free app available on Zapier similar to Formatter. And for this one, we are going to start with a filter where we're only going to continue if the constituent's lifetime revenue is greater than $10,000. So the filter is set up just like a logic statement. So we're going to start by selecting the lifetime revenue. And you can see right here we have the lifetime revenue. And for this constituent, I know that the sample that's being pulled in is actually greater than $10,000, so it makes it helpful that we can test our logic to make sure it's working. So we're going to go ahead and select, again, I just typed in lifetime revenue, so I could pull in the appropriate field for that constituent from our new transaction trigger. And then we can choose the condition. Now, when it comes to conditions, um, Zapier only has greater than or less than. So we can't say greater than or equal to $10,000. 
So what we'll actually need to say is that their lifetime revenue is greater than $9,999.99. So that once the constituent hits that $10,000 lifetime revenue, they're going to write to our Google Sheet and become a member in our giving circle. So if the constituent meets this criteria, again, it's going to test it for me here, and you can see that this constituent that we pulled in met the criteria. So this workflow would have continued. But what we're gonna do now is that if we wanna say that with that new transaction in Bloomerang, if their lifetime revenue is greater than $10,000, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a Google Sheet step, just like we did in the last workflow. But what we want to do is we want to try and find to see if the constituent is in our giving circle spreadsheet already, because we don't want to create duplicate rows for the same constituent. Instead, we want to look up first and see if they exist. And if they don't exist, then we want to create a new row. So we're going to choose the lookup spreadsheet row action for Google Sheets. There we go. I'm going to click continue, select our Google Sheets as our account. Again, we're going to look up our spreadsheet, our worksheet. In this case, we're going to use the giving circle one. And then we're going to select our lookup column. So in this case, I'm going to use the account number column. And then the lookup value I'm going to use is that from our new transaction and Bloomerang trigger, I'm going to pull in the account number for that constituent. So it's going to look in our table right here, it's going to look up in the account number column, and it's going to look up using the account number from that transaction that triggered our workflow. Now, the beautiful thing with Google Sheets is that in this lookup step, it can serve two purposes. So not only are we looking up to see if the constituent already exists, but it gives us the option to create a new row if it doesn't exist. So we're going to go ahead and check this box so that if the constituent doesn't exist, we are going to create a new spreadsheet row. So then we'll come down here and we'll map our fields from our new transaction trigger, just like we did in our last use case. So we'll map in our account number, the name of our constituent, we'll pull in the membership start date, which would be the date of this newest transaction. We're going to pull in the lifetime revenue amount. We can map in, again, primary address information. You can see how easy it is to pull in all of these fields. And this is where, again, we pulled in some of that household information. So we, down here, we pulled in the household number. So you can see, if I just even search for household, I can see these different items where I can pull in the household account number. I can pull in the household name and any household communication restrictions if there's any as well. Again, kind of allowing this giving circle sheet to serve not only as a directory, which would be these first columns here, but also for it to serve as a mailing list as well. So once I click continue, I'm going to go ahead and test this step. Because if you remember in looking at this workflow, we're on this step right here where we're going to find or create a new row in our giving circle sheet. But we also want to add two additional steps where we're going to update that giving circle sheet if the constituent was found on there. So if they're already in our giving circle, we want to update that lifetime revenue if it's changed with this most recent contract or with this most recent transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and test. And you can see that it told me on this one that it actually found a spreadsheet row, which is great. So it did what it was supposed to do. It looked up using the account number for the constituent and it found that Alfred Pennyworth was already on our giving circle. So it didn't create a duplicate row for us. It let us know that there was already a row. And so after this finding or creating the row in the Google Sheet, this is where we're gonna add actually a second filter. And with this filter, we only wanna continue if the constituent was found in our giving circle already. So on that find create row in Google Sheets step that we just created, 
there is a field that's called that data was found. And that data was found returns a true or a false. If an existing row was found, it returns true. If an existing row was not found, it returns false. So if it created a new row, it's going to be false. If it found an existing row for that constituent, it's going to be true. So we want to select this data and we only want to continue if it's true, meaning that it found an existing constituent. So once we set our filter to only continue if it found an existing constituent, then we're going to add a second Google Sheets step. And in this Google Sheets step, we are going to update the row that was found. So we're gonna go ahead and update that row for Alfred Pennyworth to show that his new lifetime revenue and then potentially even changes to his contact information as well as that could change over time. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select my spreadsheet, my worksheet, again, my giving circle. And then it has a, a field here where I can select which row I'm going to be updating. So when I select this, I'm going to cl click custom. And then on that find or create row in Google Sheets step, when it finds an existing row, it returns, you can actually search for row, uh, but it returns the row number. And so we can populate that right in here to say, okay, here's the row that we wanna update now. We wanna update the row that was found, which is row two. In this instance, I don't wanna update all of the fields on my giving circle sheet. I especially don't wanna overwrite the start date. So when someone became a member in our giving circle, Instead, I want to overwrite the lifetime revenue. Whoops. I don't want to pull it from my Google Sheet. I want to pull it from my new transaction. So I'm going to pull my lifetime revenue because we want to update it with the new lifetime revenue amount for that constituent. And then again, I'm going to pull in my address information. So that if any of that has changed, I can go ahead and, and overwrite that on my giving circle sheet so that I have the most current contact information for that individual. And so I'd go through and keep mapping through the fields that I want to update. Again, household information as well you might want to update, but go ahead and map those fields. So we have this turned on, so let's do an example. So let's go into, draw me go Chris account here. And you can see right now, this is actually, that's actually probably not a good example. She's already hit the $10,000 mark. Let's go, I'm trying to find a constituent here that doesn't have $10,000. Let's do, I actually know one, let's do uh, Sally Seashell. Okay, or sorry, Susan Seashell. So we're gonna go ahead, Susan right now has no lifetime giving information. So let's say she makes a donation of $10,000. We're gonna select our fund, our campaign, and then our appeal. So when I click save, now again, this runs in near real time. If we come over to our giving circle sheet, you're gonna see that Susan Seashell is gonna populate in here. Now her constituent account doesn't have any contact information, which is why none of that information populated and she's also not in a household. You can see that as soon as we've made that donation, her name gets added to our giving circle. We have the date that she became a member of our giving circle, and then we have her lifetime revenue. Now let's go into Alfred's account and actually submit a donation and show how his lifetime revenue will update um, based off of a new donation. So let's go to Alfred's account and we're gonna create a new donation. And we're just gonna say that he gave $100. Now he has had more donations um, since this lifetime revenue number was last updated, um, but you'll see that just how it will overwrite it here. So I wanna show you what that looks like. So we're gonna do a fund, a campaign, and an appeal. Gonna save that. Okay. So if we go back to our Google Sheet here, you will see that this lifetime revenue for Alfred, once it runs through, it's working on it right now. It, yep, you can see there it switched from the 11,500 number to now reflecting his current lifetime revenue. 
and it went through and it would have also updated any contact information if there had been any changes. So you can see how it creates that real time directory reflecting the total lifetime revenue for the members of your giving circle and also adding new members as they become eligible. So let's go ahead and take a quick poll and see what scenarios you would find most valuable when it comes to creating directories and lists using Google Sheets. So we've got a lot of examples up here. The two we've talked about, which is a directory of recurring donation schedules, a list of your giving circle members, maybe it's a list of membership transactions or a list of major donors. Could even be a list of donors or donations this month, solicitor list, constituents based off of custom fields, or if you can think of another use case that's not on this list, go ahead and let us know in the chat. Thanks, Jesse, and thanks to everyone who are answering the polls. And just as a reminder, you can select more than one option. So far, it looks like in the lead, we have major donors and constituents based on custom fields. That's about a 45 to 50% right now. Those are some of my favorite use cases. So I, I agree with all of you that have selected those two. And we also have um, membership transactions and giving circles are also mm -hmm. um, gaining some traction as well. So it looks like our okay. top use case is major donors followed by constituents based on custom fields and then giving circles and membership transactions. Perfect. Yep, those are great, great use cases and, and things that are very, easy to implement um, with Google Sheets and the Bloomerang Zapier app. So before we move on to the next use case for Google Sheets, which is a real-time dashboard, let's take a second and see if there are any questions. So if you haven't already, feel free to submit a question via the chat or the Q&A window. Um, but if we don't have any questions, we can also keep forging on. Let's keep forging on. Awesome, we'll keep going. Yeah, this next use case is pretty exciting, so I'm all for forging on. Um, so this next use case is one that we get questions on a lot. Um, so integrations with a spreadsheet really opens a world of possibilities for dashboards, custom formulas, grouping, sorting, and visualizations. So your organization may want to consider building a dashboard if you want to use visualizations to communicate key metrics, so using graphs and charts. If you want to transform and analyze data using spreadsheet style formulas. Again, if you need to make data accessible to non Bloomerang users. Or you need dynamic metrics to show progress toward goals in real time. So to demonstrate how you can build dynamic dashboards in Google Sheets, we're gonna explore a fund activity dashboard. So the fund activity dashboard is very similar to the campaign progress widget on your Bloomerang dashboard. The dashboard will show total raise for each fund and the progress toward a goal. And additionally, we're gonna take the fund activity dashboard one step further and include the number of donations and progress toward a goal for that metric as well. And so while we're gonna use fund as a use case for this, you could also create a similar dynamic dashboard to track goal progress for appeals as well. So to create a fund activity dashboard, we need to add transaction details for race transactions to a Google Sheet as a raw data set. The analysis and progress tracking will occur in a separate tab in our Google Sheet, but you can see just how simple the Zap itself is or the workflow in Zapier is to get us started. So like our prior example, we are gonna start in our Google Sheet, and you can see we have two different sheets here. I'm actually gonna hide these other ones we don't need anymore, make things a little bit cleaner. Here we go. So we have two separate sheets here. We have our transaction list, and then we have our dashboard. So the transaction list is a really basic Google Sheet. We're essentially just populating in the account number and name for the constituent, and then the date, amount, transaction type, fund campaign and appeal for each donation. Now we're gonna set up the transaction list first, set up our Zap, and then we will talk about setting up our dashboard. So 
very simple. Again, we want to make sure that our column headers are set up before we set up our Zap and Zapier. And so the dashboard amount on our dashboard sheet will actually update based off of the amount column and the fund column. But having all of these other fields are often helpful as a reference um, or will allow you to build a similar appeal dashboard from the same transaction list that we have right here. So including some of additional information like appeal, um, although it's not going to tie into our fund activity dashboard demo that we're doing right now, you could use the same transaction list and create a new sheet and essentially duplicate what we're doing to have a fund activity dashboard and also an appeal activity dashboard. So let's go ahead and hop over to Zapier and set up our Zap that's going to populate our transaction list. So as I mentioned, this is a very basic Zap in Zapier. We're gonna click make a Zap and we're gonna trigger on new transactions in Bloomerang. So we're gonna select Bloomerang and our trigger event is gonna be a new transaction. Now in this case, we wanna use raised amount. So whereas before we chose donation, recurring donation payment, and we chose pledge payment, in this instance, because I wanna see raised amounts, I'm actually going to use pledge. Again, we're gonna send our minimum amount to a penny. And then we can leave cumulative giving history and household information blank because we don't need this information syncing to our transaction sheet. So we're gonna go ahead and test our trigger to pull in a sample transaction. Okay, there we go. And then we're gonna add our Google Sheet step where we are going to create a row in our Google Sheet. So in that transaction list, we're gonna create a row for every transaction that meets that criteria. So this part of the setup is pretty straightforward and about one of the most simple G Sheet workflows you could set up in terms of we are just populating to our transaction list here. We are just gonna populate the information for each new transaction that comes into um, our Bloomerang system. So I'm just gonna map in. We're gonna pull in our date. Amount. Our transaction type. Pull in our fund, our campaign, and our appeal. Okay. So you can see how easy it is to set up the Zap that populates our transaction, our transaction list here. So very simple to set up. Again, I have one of these already set up and running. So if we actually go into the sheet, you can see those recent transactions we entered for Sally Seashell and for Alfred Pennyworth actually already added to the bottom of our transaction list here as we've been on this call today. So you can see again, it's going to operate in real time and enter those donations directly into that transaction sheet. So now let's talk about creating the dashboard. So we have the dashboard already built here, but we're gonna walk through what this looks like in terms of, let me change my goal here. Now we entered some large donations today, so you can see what this looks like, but so you can see we've already built our dashboard. Um, but we're going to walk through how we set this up so that you can replicate it yourself. So step one is to create that separate sheet in your Google Sheet for your dashboard. And you'll want to create a table that has your fund name, a column for raise, net to go, goal, and percentage towards goal. And you can see that we actually have two versions of this because one is for raised amount, for the amount of the donations that have come in. And then we have a second one that is for the number of donations. So counting different metrics um, based off of funds. So we can calculate the amount that's actually been raised as well as seeing the number of donations that have come in. So to get the total raised amount for each fund, we are going to use a sum if formula with the data from our transaction list. So I'm gonna go over here and actually show you what these formulas look like. 
Um, it's a little easier to see here as it'll be bigger on my slides than it'll be looking at actually in the Google Sheet. So if you're familiar with SEMIS formulas in Excel, in Google Sheets, they operate exactly the same way. So essentially, a SEMIS formula, you provide the range that you want to look at, the criteria you're looking for, and then the range that you want to add up or total together. So in this case, we are going to take the fund column. So we are saying that our range is from our transaction list right here is column F. So we're going to look and we're going to say, okay, so on this, we're going to look at column F. And we are only going to go ahead and total up the amount for that if it matches unrestricted. So if the fund in column F is unrestricted, then we're going to add the amount from column D together. So some is formula. If you're new to formulas, um, you know, definitely make sure to download a copy of the slides after the presentation as we do have the screenshots in there for the actual formulas themselves. And if you title the sheets the same way that we've done um, here, you should be able to use these pretty closely to how they're set up and demonstrated here in the screenshot. So the net to go is a very simple subtract subtraction equation where the total rate is subtracted from the goal amount. You can see that we're taking our goal and we're taking away our raise. So it's going to show us how far we have to go until we hit our goal. And then the percent toward goal is a simple division equation where the total raised for the fund, so the total raise right here, is divided by the goal amount. So we can get a percentage calculation as well of how close we are to hitting our goal. So these net to go and, and the percentage toward goal calculations are fairly simple. The raised one is a little more complicated if you're new to spreadsheet style formulas, but if you're familiar with some if formulas, um, it's a very straightforward formula. And so you just would follow that same structure all the way down, just changing the name of the fund um, in that criterion field for the sum if formula. Now, if we come down to this lower table where we are counting the number of donations, um, it's a little bit different metric, um, but it's actually using a count if formula. So similar to what we did with some if, but the difference is that it's counting. So it's counting how many records on our transaction list or how many rows on our transaction list have a specific fund. So the range is the same as what we had in our sum if formula, and the criterion is actually the same for each fund. The only difference is we don't have to have the range that we want to total together because it's simply performing a count. You can see for each of these, the criterion changes based off of which fund we're looking at, but it's just a very basic count if formula. Again, if you're familiar with spreadsheet formulas, um, it's a very straightforward one. Our net to go calculation is very similar to what we had in the raised table above in that it is subtracting the number of donations we've received away from the goal to give us how many donations would be left to hit our goal. And then we have a similar percentage or division calculation to show us what percent or what progress we've made towards our goal so far. So let's talk about how we created these charts here. And I'm actually going to move one of them out of the way. So we can actually, we'll do one over here on the right. Come on, there we go. Um, so when it comes to creating charts in Google Sheets, it's very straightforward operates very similarly to Excel, if you're familiar with, with Excel. But now we need to create the bar charts to show our progress. So we're going to go to our menu and we're going to click insert and click chart. And in the setup pane, we're going to move this off to the side over here. In the setup pane, we can select our chart type and we're going to select a stacked bar chart right here. And then under the series, we are going to add a series for raise. And click OK. And then we're going to add another series. 
And we are going to do this one for, oh, that's actually, with, oh, net to go, that's the other one we wanna do. Whoop. Of course, my chart went away from me there. Come here, there we go. We're gonna add our second series, which is going to be our net to go. Oh, of course, it's not wanting to let me select it right now. Here we go. Oh gosh, okay. Google Sheets is not wanting to play with me. Let me show you here how this one that's already set up. You can see we have our two series. We have our raised series and our net to go. And so it stacks them together so we can see our progress towards our total goal. And the blue is going to show us our raised amount. The red is showing us net to go. So the amount that we have not received yet to meet our goal. So let's go ahead and show how this full workflow works. So right now you can see that for the unrestricted funds, we've gotten roughly $15,500 and we've received 63 donations. So if we go into Bloomerang and we'll just do it on Alfred's account, and let's say he makes a $1,000 donation to our unrestricted fund. So this should bump our total up to about 16,500 and we should then have 64 donations on our dashboard. So if I click save, and again, it runs in near real time. So if we go to our transaction list, we can watch for it to populate here at the bottom. There it is right there. And so if we go back to our dashboard, now you can see our raised amount updated. It also updated our chart, updated our net to go and percent toward go calculations and also updated our count of donations at the bottom as well. So if you're familiar with, with Google Sheets or with Excel, the, the logic and the, the processes that you would use to build an Excel dashboard transfer over nearly one for one into Google Sheets. But you can see how easy it is to create that dynamic dashboard where all of your raw data is populating into one sheet you don't have to manually adjust any of it. So you can use a separate sheet as a dashboard or, or a face sheet to see all of that data in real time. Again, include those visualizations, perform those calculations and metrics that you want to see for that fund activity. Again, you could do the same thing for appeal as well. So there are a lot of other use cases for when you might use Google Sheets with Bloomerang. And so let's go ahead and talk through some of these. Again, this is a brainstorm from us at Sidekick of ways that we get excited about how organizations could use Google Sheets with Bloomerang. Um, so there may be, some of these may fit your organization's use case, some may not. But here are a few that, that we really like. Membership directories, monthly donor rosters, any type of dashboard, year-over-year -year revenue dashboard, the fund or appeal activity dashboard like we've been talking about. You could create a major gift pipeline. Again, mass updates. Um, if you watched our Academy session yesterday, you know a little bit about mass updates and mass edits. You can do the same thing um, in Google Sheets. If you haven't watched that webinar, I highly recommend it. It's a great one in terms of data quality and ways to maintain data consistency in your database. You can create lists of tasks for follow-ups or action steps. And then you can also create a series of what we call integration helper tools. So data quality clearing houses for your other integrations that you're using. So a way to review the data between another app that you're using, a way to kind of review it as a middle in a middle step before it actually writes into your Bloomerang database. You can use Google Sheets as a lookup table for integration mapping. You can do integration specific duplicate checks or even transform line items um, from like an e-commerce store or an online form into single entries in your Bloomerang database. So these are a bit more advanced integration concepts, but really wanna give you a sense for how versatile Google Sheets is, especially when used with the Bloomerang Zapier app. So with the flexibility of Google Sheets, it could be interpreted that we are advocating for using spreadsheets to replace reports or data collection within Bloomerang, and that's really not the case. We firmly believe that Bloomerang is your central system and that integrations 
supplement your database, they don't replace it. So data entry, reporting, and automation should start from the lens that Bloomerang is the core of your donor management and fundraising technology. And then you can use Google Sheets to supplement and extend Bloomerang, not replace it. So the next step is really getting started. And it's as easy as signing up for a Zapier account. There's a free trial. There are nonprofit discounts. You can connect your Bloomerang and Google Sheets accounts to Zapier. Bloomerang has templates available in the Zapier app directory. So if you search for Bloomerang in the Zapier directory, look up Bloomerang here real quick. And you scroll down, you can actually look at the different templates right here that Bloomerang has set up. And they do have some of these already set up with Google Sheets. So different ways to have data from Google Sheets flow into Bloomerang, but you can see other applications that they have templates set up with as well. So go ahead and try out the templates. Turn your zap on, start monitoring them, and high five yourself once your integrations start running successfully. So we covered a lot of information today, and I'm sure for some of you there may be questions or you have ideas of different ways that you'd want to automate workflows with Google Sheets and Bloomerang. My name is Jesse. My email is up here on the screen, and our door at Sidekick Solutions is truly always open. If you want to work with a consultant to set up custom workflows or develop a custom Bloomerang integration, whether it's with Google Sheets or with another application you're using, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We are here to support Bloomerang users and using the Bloomerang Zapier app and are happy to talk through any possible use case that you would have for automating data between Bloomerang and another system you're using or from your other system back into Bloomerang. So I'm gonna hand it off to Diana for a quick poll before we open up for some questions, if there are any. Thanks, Jesse. Um, I'm gonna launch a poll. If you would like a follow-up about consulting services to set up integrations with Bloomerang through Zapier, it can be with Google Sheets. Um, we've also talked about Eventbrite and MailChimp, or if you have something else in mind, or even Bloomerang to Bloomerang, let us know. In the meantime, um, we do have one question here. Um, when you are working on the dashboards, can you further break that down or set this up based on the type of constituents if you have constituent custom fields set up so you would see the breakdown? Yeah, so you absolutely could. So you would want to pull, um, you know, whatever custom fields you have for that constituent can be pulled in from that new transaction trigger in Bloomerang. So you'd want to set up columns to map that data into your transaction list for the dashboard. Uh, but you could absolutely then set up formulas to segment out those totals by the type of constituent. Um, again, whether that's individual versus organization or it's using a custom field. Um, yes, there are ways to customize that dashboard much further. We kept it fairly basic and straightforward for this demonstration. But there are lots of ways to take that fund activity dashboard or, or any type of revenue dashboard to the next level and really tweak it to show different segments, different you know, types of activity, again, different groupings of constituent types. There's a lot of different ways of how you could use that dashboard. And, and I think constituent type is a very common one that we see. Um, you know, Pamela, your example of residents, churches, board members, corporate sponsors, Yep, if you have those set, the, set up as custom fields, you can absolutely set up formulas to then create totals that update in real time on a dashboard for those different segments. Awesome, I love that. It's important to be tracking um, how well your different channels are doing as well. So I love that Pam mm -hmm. Pamela's example was asking about appeals and um, constituent codes. That's a great example. Well, it looks like we don't have any other questions at the moment. Um, do you have any parting thoughts for us, Jesse, or any favorite ways to set up dashboards? Oh gosh, I'm a huge fan of dashboards. Um, you know, I'm I'm a visual learner, so for me, being able to create visualizations, I think, are really really powerful in a Google Sheet dashboard. And I think the other, the other piece that's really important to keep in mind is if you're looking at dashboards in Google Sheets, 
think of what segments you would want to calculate totals for, you know, whether it's revenue or raise, think of those segments and then think about how you're coding that data in your boomerang system. Because the ability for your dashboard to reflect accurate totals also is tied into data entry consistency and data quality when you're entering those transactions in Bloomerang. So if you have certain segments of transactions that you want to pull or constituents you want to pull to calculate revenue or raise the amount for, it's really important to make sure your Bloomerang system is also set up to track those different segments so that when the data writes into your transaction sheet, you have the custom fields that are tracking that or the fund campaign and appeal, you know, coding or different values that you want to pull those different segments. So it's kind of a, you know, Google Sheets integrations, I like to say are kind of half data quality and half actually using the Google Sheets um, because your output in your Google Sheet and the metrics you're going to see are dependent on the quality of the data and how your system is set up in Boomerang. So at Sidekick, not only are we integration experts, we also help with consulting on Bloomerang in general across the board. Um, so if you're looking at an integration, we have the experience and the understanding of, of how Bloomerang databases are configured. So if there are tweaks that need to be made to your system or things to talk about in terms of how you're using custom fields or fun campaign and appeal in Bloomerang, you know, there may be best practice recommendations to help ensure that your integration with Google Sheets will be successful. So there's always kind of the two pieces of that of it's not just getting the data into the Google Sheet, but it's also making sure that the data coming out of your Bloomerang system is structured in a way that's going to make your Google Sheet integration successful. I absolutely agree with that. You're dashboards, your lists are only going to be as good as the data that you put in. So you want to make mm -hmm. sure that everything is nice and accurate and is consistent is complete and is complete. So absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We're very excited for the Zapier integration and we're very excited to see where all of you will take it. We heard some great ideas today and some great questions as well. Zapier has an integration with over 2,000 different, different apps. We talked about Google Sheets today. We've only scratched the surface of Google Sheets. There's so much more that you can do. And we hope that you can find a way to automate your processes and work better and work smarter with Bloomerang using Zapier. So thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful Thursday afternoon or evening and have we hope to see you in another Academy class soon. Bye.